Hello, we're back, and it's time for us to break out of the slave pens. There are actually multiple ways you can do this. <laughs> the first way is the direct assault. Going through the northern door, and fighting your way through all the guards. You can pick up a bunch of bows and arrows doing that. If you elect to do that, Mirzal and his gang can be recruited to your cause. The second way you can go out is through the door in Dinos' ring. To do that, you would need to steal the key that Trusty is carrying. <coughs> you need to be so... You need to be at least a certain level of thief to pull that off. If you have the slave pen key, you can take the southern exit. You can also just kill Trusty for his key, but I don't like doing that. The third method of breaking out of the slave pens involves coming out of the old western belt western entrance for the monsters. To do so, you actually need to align yourself with Scar and his game, and then pretend to fight in the arena. There is a fourth method. The three methods that have so far been discussed all involve hacking your way through the guards. Um, the southern exit, there is a possibility of not alerting the guards, but it's not a very good chance. Merlon, the slime ball, is willing to be bribed. If you've been thorough in your investigation of the slave pens, you will find plenty of gems, and he only takes one. Once you give Merlon your gem, a new option at the arena at the Slave Pen Gate opens up. Let me in, Merlon sent me. At this point, at this point, Kurzak opens you opens the door up for you and leads you over to the western door. Now, what Merlon told you to do was to come down to this Templar down here. We're going up here instead. And no one cares that you're stealing the stuff on your way out. Mostly because Merlon is actually a ringer. He works directly for that Templar. And his role is to uh, be bribed by prospective escapees, who then go fight that Templar and presumably get killed. You get 5,000 XP for breaking out, and you get an additional 3,000 for breaking out without triggering the alarm. I have not measured how much XP you get for breaking out and murdering everyone. Okay, we want synaptic static for J. Disintegrate for a quick kill. Acid arrow. Acid arrow. Acid arrow is an incredibly useful spell. But you'll notice that in sneaking out that way, we didn't pick up any bows. We're going to rectify that. If you want to fight, if you want to pick up an extra fight, tell this guy that you'll go another way. Ask him how much he wants, tell him that's far too much, and then go, all right, take the money. You lose a fair bit of money this way, but this early on in the game, it's maybe 65 chips. While he is busy, you're going to want to set up a grease on the pipe. 
So he goes and talks to Chur. And then you want to lure Chur down here. Tell Chur that you're a sewer inspector for the city, and he will call you out on your lie. He'll spawn city guards, who will then immediately start firing on you. It's a bit of a tight squeeze. And Scylla doesn't have any level 2 spells ready. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, but when you survive this fight, you'll get some bows and arrows to work with. This early on in the game, this is a big benefit. Cermak took a hit, so we can't cast. So I lose... Uh, I lose a chunk of ceramic pieces, but I pick up bows and arrows. If you ask me, that's a worth, worthwhile trade, considering we also have the... sewer scenario to deal with. Cermak's taking a bunch of hits. Silo's not doing that hot either. Okay, that's Chur down. I didn't have the grease in the right spot. Can you cast this turn? Yes, you can. Make that guy run. If they get a chance to guard, you don't want to run up to them because then they'll get a free hit on you. <clears throat> Whether they will actually deal damage is another story entirely, but you don't want to walk up to them if they've done nothing that turn. Cratchit's in range of the other one. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Okay. Bows now, but I'll take them all just in case. I love when the game gets stuck like this. Okay, so with Chur and his crack his crackies, with Chur and his lackeys defeated, we have a few options to do. While I'm thinking about this, we should distribute these arrows. So Garakus gets one, Cratchit gets one, Cermak gets one, and Scylla gets one. And everyone should have a bell. I forgot I picked up a broken weapon earlier. Alright, so, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to have 
Garakus break down this door. Uh, do I need to heal up? We should be good. Guard. It's basically a make them come to us scenario. Because we need to rescue her. Technically, is the son of a kank. That gets you right into the battle without running the risk of taking the hit. You want to go after this dude first because he can blind you when he hits you. After that, you've just got the warrant thugs to deal with. And they're kink. They're usually kink. Now this guy has a bunch of armor and he also has chameleon gloves. Uh, battle gloves can be fun to play with, but in the general case you're not going to be using them all that much. Oh, I picked up an armor. And I picked up the chameleon gloves. They count as a two-handed weapon. No, they count as a one-handed weapon. The Chameleon Gloves, in particular, can blind an enemy when you hit them. Okay, we want to unlock that. Come in here. Take the dude's chest. McKetzel is dead. He won't bother you now. I'll untie you now. How is Chur matched up in all this? Let's go now. Everyone gets experience. We are now 4th level Divine Caster and a whole bunch of arcane stuff that I didn't read because the stuff goes by really fast and oh hey, you're another one of the Ketzel's followers. <clears throat> that green flash when Cratchit made it a hit once the community buffs taking effect. Okay, so the Chief's Daughter will follow you. But if you move too quickly, the Chief's Daughter will get lost, and then you'll miss out on the Helm of Contemplation. If the Chief's Daughter dies in the upcoming battle, you also lose out on the Helm of Contemplation. It's not a particularly useful item, but you only get one of... You only get, I believe, three magical helmets in the, in the entire game. So you may as well pick it up. So, Divine Magic. Do we have level 3 Divine? We do not yet have level 3 Divine. Yeah, we do not yet have level 3 Divine, so we can't just cheese this fight. We actually have to do strategy. I'll help save the temple. Okay. We want to keep the chief alive, and we want to keep the chief's daughter alive. So we're going to have Cermak come up here and draw some attacks. Um, hmm. So uh, drop a Dust Devil up there. More bodies are better than less. Gracchus, get up there and do stuff. Okay. You come up here and support. Okay, you can only have one summon in you can only have one summon active at a time, so Scylla drop some bolts. You also need to be very careful not to hit your allies in this fight, because if you if you Anger your allies, you will not get the Helm of Contemplation. The Warren Chief actually does not drop it on death. Just 
do not like this situation as it's developing. Cermak, you get this dude. Paralysis is a useful effect to deal to deal out. Because <clears throat> you will always deal maximum damage to a paralyzed enemy. That is when you land hits. Should be everyone still alive. There's the chief. There's the chief's daughter. Okay, crap check. No, not Cernak. You should also have that person. So you should throw around some bullets. Weapon is broken? Well, that's always fun. Uh, already running out of weapons. Oh, right. Not a long sword. I forgot that's a thing that pops up. And with that, we have saved the target. And we get more levels. Okay, the sound great and actually you're going to be in close combat enough for biofeedback to be helpful. Alright, level three. Level three arcane. Blank. Alright. So we've saved the Tari, won the Helm of Contemplation. So I will see y'all next time for the Undersewers. And remember, winners don't lose frogs.